Hi guys, in this video we will explore the structure and function of the enzyme acetylcholine esterase. Let's begin. Acetylcholine esterase is a serine hydrolase present at the cholinergic synapse that catalyzes the hydrolysis of neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft where it binds to receptors represented by blue triangles, creating nerve impulses, and then is immediately degraded by acetylcholine esterase. This terminates synaptic transmission. Acetylcholine is an organic compound composed of an ester and a positively charged choline group. It plays a role in learning, memory, and muscle movement and is found in both the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Note acetylcholine receptors are not actually triangles and acetylcholine esterase is not actually a pair of scissors. Here's an actual representation of the enzyme. Now let's dive deeper into the structure of acetylcholine esterase. Before we continue, I'd like to introduce Torpedo californica, a species of electrical fish. They have a wide array of nerve-like structures that generate electricity. Consequently, acetylcholine esterase is largely abundant in Torpedo californica. Here are the primary structure of acetylcholine esterase found in humans and Torpedo californica is shown. Oftentimes, Torpedo californica are used to study the enzyme due to the conservation of residues highlighted in purple, including the catalytic site triad outlined in red, and the similarity in structure of the enzymes. From this point on, I will be analyzing the acetylcholine esterase found in Torpedo californica. Acetylcholine esterase is 586 residues long and has a molecular weight of 65.9 kilodaltons. It has 62 negatively charged residues, these are aspartic acid and glutamic acid, and 49 positively charged residues, these are lysine, arginine, and histidine. The environmental pH is about 7.2. The, the PI of acetylcholine esterase is 5.59. Acetylcholine esterase also contains aromatic residues. These are phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, and histidine. Since some concentration of histidine is positively charged at pH 7.2, it obeys Huckel's rule and is therefore aromatic. Now let's discuss the secondary structure. Acetylcholine esterase has an alpha-beta-alpha -alpha pattern, a beta sheet is sandwiched by alpha helices. The yellow arrows indicate individual beta strands which form a beta sheet, while the pink loop-like structures indicate alpha helices. Acetylcholine esterase has 14 alpha helices. Here, the peptidic carbonyl oxygen of aspartic acid 393 forms a hydrogen bond with the peptidic amide hydrogen of aspartic acid 397. A hydrogen bond occurs between residues about 4 amino acids apart. Acetylcholine esterase contains 12 beta strands that form a mixed beta sheet. Here the peptidic amide hydrogen of isoleucine is hydrogen bonded to the carbonyl oxygen of arginine and the carbonyl oxygen of isoleucine is hydrogen bonded to the peptidic amide hydrogen of another isoleucine. These strands run parallel because the hydrogen bonds are not linear. Now let's discuss the tertiary structure of the enzyme. It's a globular protein containing a 20 angstrom deep active site. Acetylcholine esterase is a homodimer consisting of two identical protein subunits. There are three disulfide bonds in acetylcholine esterase. In this image, cysteine is covalently linked with another cysteine, which are both found in alpha helices. The alpha helices are oriented, so the cysteine residues are positioned next to each other. Acetylcholine esterase operates at a pH of around 7.2, and cysteine has a pKa of 8.4. So around 7.2, there is some concentration of reactive sulfur ions. As a result, the sulfur anions readily react to form the thermodynamically favorable disulfide bond. The active site of acetylcholine esterase contains the esteratic site, and the anionic site. The esteratic site is where catalysis occurs. It contains a catalytic triad, serine 200, histidine 440, and glutamic acid 327. The anionic site is composed of 6 to 7 negatively charged amino acids, including tryptophan 84. Now let's review catalysis of acetylcholine esterase. Acetylcholine esterase undergoes acylation and a deacylation reaction, where it conducts general acid base catalysis and covalent catalysis. First, general base catalysis occurs. Histidine deprotonates serine, making serine nucleophilic. Next, serine attacks the carbonyl carbon of acetylcholine, forming the first tetrahedral intermediate transition state. The temporary covalent bond between acetylcholine esterase and acetylcholine indicates covalent catalysis. Here you can see that the transition state is stabilized by non-covalent interactions. First, you can see that serine is covalently bonded to acetylcholine. Then you can see that histidine, protonated histidine, forms hydrogen bonds with the ester oxygen of acetylcholine and the newly bonded oxygen of serine. We can also see tryptophan 84, a component of the anionic site, forming a cation pi bond with the positively charged choline group. The negative electron cloud interacts with the positive charge, forming an electrostatic like interaction. The negative oxygen of the tetrahedral intermediate also forms hydrogen bonds with the amide hydrogens of the backbone. Here is a freeze frame snapshot of the non-covalent interactions just discussed. 
Next, a lone pair on the negatively charged oxygen comes down and kicks off the ester oxygen attached to the choline group. At the same time, the ester oxygen deprotonates the positively charged histidine, and the first product, choline, is formed. Next, in general base catalysis, histidine deprotonates a local water molecule. The hydroxy ion conducts a nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl carbon, creating the second tetrahedral intermediate. The lone pair on the negatively charged oxygen comes down, reforming the carbonyl and kicking off serine. At the same time, general acid catalysis occurred and serine deprotonates histidine. The catalytic triad is reset with the products of choline and acetic acid. Other important sites of the enzyme to catalysis include the peripheral anionic site and the oxyanion hole. The peripheral anionic site consists of aromatic residues that line the active site gorge, including phenylalanine and tryptophan. These aromatic residues are involved in pi stacking, an attractive non-covalent interaction between the pi bonds of aromatic rings. This is shown by the dashed line through the center of the rings. Additionally, due to van der Waals interactions between the hydrophobic aromatic rings and the methyl groups of acetylcholine, the peripheral anionic site functions as a low affinity binding site for acetylcholine, initially pulling acetylcholine down the active site gorge. These hydrophobic aromatic residues also give rise to a low dielectric constant which, within the active site, which produces a high effective local charge and in turn stronger electrostatic interactions. Here you can see the peripheral anionic site in blue within the active site. In addition to the peripheral anionic site, there is also a three-pronged oxyanion hole within the active site gorge. The oxyanion hole is made up of alanine and multiple glycines. Glycines are able to maximize their phi size due to their small size and flexibility and can thus contort to allow their peptidic amide nitrogens to hydrogen bond to the negatively charged oxygens of the tetrahedral intermediate, thus stabilizing the transition states. Acetylcholine esterase has an extremely high catalytic efficiency one close to the upper diffusion limit. Acetylcholine esterase has a Km of about 2.06 times 10 to the negative moles per liter. This means that only a small amount of substrate is needed to fully saturate the enzyme, indicating a high binding affinity. Although I could not find the Kcat value for acetylcholine esterase, given the high catalytic efficiency, small Km value, and the stabilization of the transition states, I'm inferring there is a large Kcat value, or turnover rate. Low levels of acetylcholine are associated with many neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's. Therefore, many inhibitory drugs act on acetylcholine esterase. This has been shown to have moderate effects on cognitive function. Thank you for watching and I hope you now understand more about acetylcholine esterase.